Hello, this is Helen Linda again with our first presentation of week one of the D4L content creation module. This week, we'll help you inventory important considerations that will influence the multimedia content you create. Before we jump into creating content, let's stop and think, why would you want to create multimedia content for your library? If you've already gone through some of the other modules, then the instructional design plan you've created begins to answer some of those whys. For those of you that haven't created an instructional design plan, these questions will generate an inventory of essential information to influence your content creation. The main thing is to teach library users or staff something you know, from how to use the online catalog or how to order an ebook to steps in the research process. Multimedia content can be available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, whereas your library isn't available 24 seven. Access to the content online can be more convenient to the user. If it's convenient for them to use a tutorial at 4 a.m., it's there. They can use it then or whatever time is convenient to them. Also, it's self-directed learning. They can learn at their own pace. They can rewind a particular part or come back to it later if they forget. It can be interactive, with features for the listeners to check their knowledge or ask questions. And different media formats can help reach a lot of different learning styles. You can reach larger groups over a longer period of time than you might in face-to-face -face setting. There are a lot of advantages to creating online content to help teach different topics. What other reasons do you have to create online content for your library? Which of these are most important for your community? After this video, you'll have a reflection exercise in your workbook about your own why. There are a lot of considerations for creating multimedia content to share online. You don't usually just sit down and record something unless you've done it a lot of times. It's really important to plan your tutorial, screencast, webinar, or other multimedia content. There's space in your workbook for you to explore many of these considerations, and then you'll incorporate them back into your instructional design plan in week three. Who is your audience? Grads, undergrads, faculty, community, staff? Be clear about your audience. Make the content easy for them to understand. Consider the devices, browsers, etc. that they are likely to use. What are your learning objectives? Have clearly defined outcomes in mind. Revisit the foundation module if you need help with that. Is the topic conveyed well in a video format? Many topics are well served by the combination of audio with visuals through video, but not all. If what you have to teach is best conveyed by text, then maybe a video is not the best choice. Screens full of text can be more difficult to follow than just working from a text format in the first place. What other formats are possible? When does it support your content to make it more visual or add sound? Make sure your content will be clear to the users in each format you choose. What can you provide to supplement any single piece of content? There's a variety of different formats you can use, and different learners may prefer one over the other. Audio, video, text, infographic, multiple formats can also give you a chance to plug your resources as each one points to and then supplements the others. How long should the content be? What do you know about the attention span of your users or what can you find out? Current trends lean toward breaking content into a series of shorter chunks rather than a single long video or text to keep users' attention and make it easier for them to find specific content to review later. Who will create the videos? You? Or who can help you? Collaboration can make all the difference. What expertise do they have? Perhaps a subject matter expert, sometimes referred to as a SME, can work with somebody who has more expertise about instructional design. You may have other colleagues with expertise in multimedia production or editing, or the aspects of web design that will help you share it all online. One of you may be more comfortable appearing on screen or doing voiceovers. Have they done this before? 
What will they need to learn or practice? That will affect how long the process will take. What is your budget? Some of the software is free and others you have to pay for, which we'll talk about later. Depending on what you want to do, it may take some time for a staff person to create the video. Think of your budget in terms of staff hours as well. Can your library spare a staff member to do it, including the time to learn a program? If not, who can you contract with to do the work? How much will their services cost? How long will you need them? What tools can you use? You'll need to consider both software and hardware to meet your objectives within your budget. What do you already have access to? Will you need to purchase anything additional? What software is available for free? We'll cover this more in week three. What interaction can you include? Interactivity helps students learn better. Provide some interaction even if it's before or a survey at the end. In fact, you can do evaluation by putting up a simple survey at the end to see if the content was helpful. Immediate feedback is important, so if you include some quizzes, provide them feedback on how they're doing right away. You've already seen some examples in D4L of ways we've provided interaction, our challenge questions, reflections in your workbook, occasional surveys. Some different tools for assessment will come up again in the course management module. In the community module, you've already discussed different ways of facilitating a discussion including the fact that discussion forums don't always work unless students are required to participate. Where will you store the videos and other content? Videos will take up a lot of space on your internet server, so do you have a plan with your provider to account for that? What cloud-based services can you consider? What free services are available? This will also be covered more in week three. Finally, who will update the videos later? We recommend that you check your content every year so that you can see if they need to be updated or even taken off the website entirely if they've become outdated. This is another argument for developing your content as a series of smaller components. It's easier to go back later and update relevant pieces as needed instead of overhauling the whole larger unit. You'll continue to answer these questions throughout this module but now that you've worked through some of these considerations, you're ready to move on to learning about the science of information overload and how to combat it.